Alright, so in this video, I want to replace the passenger side axle seal at the uh, center axle disconnect. This one uh, sprung a leak after breaking the knuckle and I guess it put some pressure on it. I don't really know, but it started leaking after that. And I do not have the correct tools to install it, but I usually make a lot of my tools anyway. So, I'm going to use a hole saw to install this seal. How am I going to do that? I'll show you. Now, can you see the seal here? The way this seal's made is a little funky. Um, you can't really, there's no lip to press the seal in. And then you see the rubber here that squishes. Let's see, can you see it? So you can't really drive it in that way. Uh, socket, I have a socket that fits on the inside here, but it's too thick and it, uh, it smashes the rubber in there. So how am I going to drive a seal with my hole saw? Well, I'm not the one that figured this out, but it's pretty simple. So I believe this is a two inch hole saw and it fits in there pretty good. Um, oh, maybe you can see, I don't know which one of those cameras you are, but you see it fits in there really good. So I'm going to grind those teeth off, make it nice and flat so I don't uh, gouge up my seal, and we'll get to work. Alright, I'm just going to throw it in the vise, and uh, try not to egg shape it go to grinding. So I'm going to use a flat disc. It's by Benchmark Abrasives. I use those. It's, didn't know. This is not a sponsored video. I've not. But maybe someday. They did send me a care package though. So I guess maybe maybe I could say this is a sponsored video kind of. They gave me some discs and this shirt but not for this video. So Benchmark Abrasives. Thank you. did was grind the teeth down until all of the little indentions for the teeth disappeared. I should have zoomed in and showed you a little better, but now that's all the, uh, didn't even get hot. Huh. That's pretty cool. But now it's all the same across there. All the teeth are gone and now it's nice and uh, level. We'll see here. Should have been because I ground all the teeth off equally. All right, and that there is your lightweight. It's got all those speed holes in it. I'm gonna call it lightweight. Steel driver. All right, so I am going to have to drill this hole out to fit a uh, threaded rod ahead. head. Let me go grab that real quick. Okie doke, I believe this is a 7 8 threaded rod. Yeah. It's what I have. Um, you know, just a half inch threaded rod would work, work fine. Um, but this is the only threaded rod I have, so I'm going to drill it out to uh, slide in there. that bit's ruined. You know, these bits are awful expensive. It seems like I burn them up, but I don't know how to sharpen them. And there's no tooling company around to resharpen, so I really don't know. Really what to do. I hate to throw away a, uh, $45 bit. Son of a 
have a gun that was hot. What was I thinking? You thought I was going to grab it again, didn't you? I'm dumb. But not that dumb. This will drop down on here. And then I'll be able to tighten this up through the center axle disconnect port. And the seal will sit in here like this. And I will be able to tighten the nut up on this side and pull this whole thing into the housing. Start tearing stuff off the truck and uh, you'll see me there. caliper bracket and believe it or not one of the most critical parts to the tie overland and axle swap is the caliper bracket spacers to allow you to run your Chevy calipers on your six lug rotors to always keep essential vehicle specific tools in the vehicle you're taking off road. This axle nut and this socket to take the, uh, the wheel bearing off, the Chevy wheel bearing. Remember the washer, don't lose it. I've got everything off of the uh, off of the knuckle. So I'm gonna slide this stub shaft out. And it's the passenger side, the uh, short one. Remember there's gonna be crud in the bottom of that uh, housing. Now, I'm going to disconnect all of the center axle. I'm going to disconnect the center axle disconnect parts and just pull that out. Um, I have a cable shifter instead of uh, instead of a vacuum like the Dodges use. I use a uh, cable shifter for that. So I'm just going to let it dangle. Well, I thought those were a 10 millimeter, but. There's that ever elusive that nine millimeter socket. Hmm. Who'd have thought it? Look how much oil I'm gonna drop on the ground here. Oh, this, there goes the drippage. All right, I got a, got a pan. Well, actually, a sheet, a cookie sheet. Don't believe me? There you go. Cookie sheet. For some reason, this gimbal does not like hanging on its head. And now I got the pan. It's not going. Oh, there it goes. There you go, buddy. Go to leak. See if I can drop anything down in there. I'm just gonna stick that up top. I am gonna pull this collar out. Pull the collar out. See that? That thing takes a little bit of abuse. And I do think I'm gonna have to pull the inner axle seal out. Well, I hear the fire truck. I'm glad I am uh, not on call. It's a house fire. Working for the gas company, you usually have to go and shut the gas off. Ah. 
I, so I remember what that big washer was for. You take this, you put on the, uh, oh, chase that thing down. Put on the end of this tube, and you can run it down the axle tube, push down on the axle tube, and drag all that crud out. That is what you'd be dragging through your seal if you didn't pull this out. Now I'll do it a few more times. That's mud and grease and gear oil. I thought I was gonna be smart and get some of those axle tube seals that go in here to seal your axles uh, when I built it. But they're for a Jeep Dana 44 that has a lot smaller axle tubes and they wouldn't seal them. Now, people talk bad about those, um, but it only keep all the crud from building up in the tube. I guess it's a gear wall, but it wasn't let any mud in there. So I'm gonna run this down through there without the washer on it. Washer, washer, whatever you call it. Now from the disconnect, I'm gonna pack that axle tube with paper towels. All right, we'll see if you can see all the crud that comes out of that. One thing I am going to do is smear a little uh, black RTV around the edges like you do on a uh, axle seal to keep it from leaking, a rear axle seal. I don't know if I should do that or not. I think I'm going to though, and maybe it'll just help it seal just a little bit better if it was leaking around the edges here. I don't know, it was kind of dented. I may have gooped it up whenever I put it in. It may have been leaking a long time, I just realized it. All right, so I'm going to run the threaded rod in there. and. Uh, Get all this fastened up. Okay, doke, I'm gonna go handheld with this for a minute. Make y'all sick. But can you see there how that's gonna work? So that'll tighten up against there and pull this whole rod backwards, which will drag everything into this uh, area back here, and then the seal is in there. I know time is money, and uh, the $45 tool may be, uh, may be worth more people than, uh, you know, it may not bother somebody else to buy that $45 tool, but I have junk laying around and I use junk to make tools. So that's what I did. Saved me 45 bucks. Kinda, maybe. I probably didn't save any money, I just wasted my time. All right, so here goes nothing. So I'm gonna smear just a little bit of, uh, I'm just gonna smear just a tiny little bit around the outside edge of it. I may never be able to get this seal back out either. It's gonna be a hard place to clean too. But, comes down to it. Just have to do it, I guess. Oh, man, it barely fits. I didn't think about that. All right, that slid up in there. Try to sneak this thing by without dragging the seal out. Pull some heads on it. Maybe I can get it started. If I can get it started, it'll be good enough. Right, so I went ahead and tightened it up in there a little bit more. I can see that. Pulled it in there a little bit further. Um, I think that's further than I had it in there the last time. So maybe last time all that happened was that the seal fell out. And it didn't go bad. I mean, I couldn't find anything bad with the old one. installing the collar put the beveled side towards the wheel every time I do that I question it which way it goes so maybe this will help somebody
foot pounds. So you get that spec from the Chevy bearing. I don't know if you could read that earlier. It's a, a no oxide, a special. Um, it's the best anti-corrosion stuff that I've ever seen. So the brake caliper bolts, brake caliper bracket bolts will be torqued to between 129 and 133. We'll do it good and tight. All right, I'll throw the wheel back on and we'll be done. You thought I forgot my axle nut, didn't you? It's kind of hard to torque it to spec off the ground. The axle nut is supposed to be tightened to 188 foot pounds. This thing only goes up to 150, so I'm going to go 150 and then I'll turn it a little bit past it after it clicks. You have to change that axle cell with a hole saw. You didn't believe me, did you? So I'm doing this to get ready for rendezvous in Ozarks. By the time you see this, it'll be after the rendezvous. So if you met me there, it was nice meeting you. 
The only thing I have left to do is change the oil and I am ready for the rendezvous. So I appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. Thanks for watching.